Living, learning and leading university reform in the pandemic shadow. In 2020, COVID swept the world by surprise. Contagious, catastrophic, conspiracy came the cries. Funding diverted urgently to hospitals and quarantine. Scientists toiled tirelessly in search of a vaccine. The cities were empty, freeways lay bare, woken only by sirens and an occasional flare. Gone the hustle and bustle of laneway cafes. Out of work actors lamented closure of plays. News broadcasts recycled daily death tallies. Hospitals spilled into streets and side alleys. The stench of death hung in the air and surrounds. Pop-up morgues appeared in car parks and grounds. Supermarket shelves lay empty and bare. Not a toilet roll could be found anywhere. Panic buying exposed life's ugly side as fights over products saw greed replace pride. Social distancing and community bubbles Banned family visits and grandparents' cuddles. Birthday celebrations were confined to home. And those in aged care were left to suffer alone. Faces of children were glued to small windows of high-rise apartments that cast menacing shadows. The pubs were off limits, food supplies low. Some feared a hot summer, others braced against snow. Part two, learning in the pandemic shadow. The lights were turned off, the campus was closed. We were told to wear masks, cover our mouth and our nose. We went into lockdown and were sent home. Continue our learning on laptop or phone. A baby is crying. Our house appears to have shrunk. I hide from distractions curled up on my bunk. To connect to the session, I was told to use Zoom. I've as much chance of that as touching the moon. My heart's beating faster, my stress levels rise. I'm still not connected after 17 tries. My phone battery's dead. My charger is missing. Oh, how I wish to go outdoors and go fishing. I pick up a whiff of a fresh coffee pot, which reminds me of friends whom I miss such a lot. I tried to join chat room to see how they're going. But nothing beats face to face toing and froing. The weekends are lonely. Sports grounds are locked. The nightclubs are silent. They no longer rock. 
I know I must get back to my studies online. But right now, believe me, I'm not feeling fine. I hate things have changed. We were all doing great. To return to old times, how long must I wait? I guess I can manage a little bit longer as my digital skills are becoming much stronger. Part 3 Leading University Reform If university reform can change the world we must not settle for pebbles but reach for the pearl. Academics are challenged to step up and lead. Work with government, business, community to succeed. Be bold, be courageous, leave no stone unturned. Expect doubters, distractors and to be spurned. Keep your eyes on the vision and the end game. Avoid seduction from hubris, fortune and fame. Open your hearts to multiple voices. Blend wisdom with fairness when making choices. Allow space for change and new possibilities and grab with both hands attractive opportunities. Design learning activities which encourage engagement. Apply rigour and integrity to academic achievement. Research and stay true to proven pedagogies when introducing new emerging technologies. Reflect on the past and the legacy left. To forget, not remember, will cast us adrift. Examine what's lost with insight and grace and advocate for humanity the whole human race. Reform will be hard. You may not like all you hear. Stay focused and calm and keep your mind clear. Our grandchildren and their children will be richer for this. So don't let this golden opportunity go awry or a miss. Thank you. I can you hear me? I hope you enjoyed that. It was a different perspective on on looking at um, how we interpret research and how we present the research, and uh, it was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I'd be interested in any comments. Thank you, Lorraine. That was a, a very creative, realistic view of our lives on the, over the last two years. So thank you very much for that. Um, anybody in the audience wants to engage with Lorena about her poem? Thank you for that creative piece. Thank you. I must say, Lorraine, I didn't think you could write poem, but <laughs> poems, but I must say, as, as uh, what uh, Dr. Singh has said, you've summarized, I think, what everyone has gone through. All right, and I think uh, 
what's more important is that you have touched upon many of the themes that have actually been discussed today. So I think uh, it, it uh, to me, it, it actually uh, basically sunk in. It, it, it actually, you know, basically, I mean, you could feel what you actually went through, through that uh, piece that you actually presented. Thank you very much. Anyway. Thank you, Dr. Nair. There's quite a few comments um, on the chat, Lorraine. So oh, I'll have a look. commenting that it's a beautiful poem, very creative and emotional, very deep. Thank you, Lorraine, for an amazing piece. Oh, oh yes. We look forward to more creative pieces in the next edition, Lorraine. Keep the writing going. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. I think that's a challenge to you, Lorraine, that I think next time we want another one. Okay. Gosh, right. I've, I've written one from the teacher's point of view as well, so another time. <laughs> Next edition. Yes. Okay. Um, Prof Naya, should we move to the closing? Yes, please do. Okay. Um, so, everyone, we are doing a short closing ceremony at this point in time to cater for our international audience, and uh, but I but the conference itself is not over. So we will have lunch after this and we have a very special keynote speaker from the USA, Prof Mishra. Uh, for those of you who know the TPAC model or TPAC framework, he was the developer of this TPAC framework. And this framework brings together the technology, the pedagogy, the uh, content knowledge, um, all, all together into one component when we're looking at e-learning. So we still do have a very interesting keynote speech post the lunch session and a few more research presentations. So I want to start off by saying that I personally was reflecting on our situation a year ago when we were all so anxious and uncertain about how virtual conferences are going to run. And I watched a number of colleagues at this edition who were present last year and I'm so excited to see how they have developed in terms of their comfort, in terms of their proficiency in participating in these virtual conferences. So for me, this is a great example of academic empowerment and upskilling in a practical sense. Well done to all of you uh, who have made this leap into the online world. My thanks commences with my gratitude to Prof Naya for his guidance and support and mentorship in hosting the second edition of Digital Conference. To our associates, that's VIT, Emerge Africa, Amity Mauritius, a thank you to all of you for your participation and your support. We have had three very uh, powerful keynote speeches and one more to come, so our You're off. Are you? I'm here. Yeah, okay, back. Okay. To the reviewers who have taken time to provide us with high quality academic reviews, thank you to all of you. And most importantly, to all of our global group of colleagues and researchers who have so willingly and enthusiastically shared your research journey with us through your abstracts, which you've submitted through your four papers and through your presentations. Without you, there would have been no conference. Thank you to the session chairs for your dedicated efforts in managing the sessions, especially keeping to time. And to the non-presenting attendees, thank you for your active engagement. Final thanks go to the organizing committee for their dedicated efforts and for their support throughout the year. I invite Tony from Image Africa, who is one of our associates in this uh, conference to say a few words. Tony, if you're here. Okay, if Tony's not here, uh, Prof Panjan, who is the Vice Chancellor of Amity Mauritius, Amity Institute of Higher Education was also an associate for this conference. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Singh. Uh, good afternoon or good morning or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are. Uh, indeed, Amity Mauritius is delighted to have been an associate uh, of this conference because Amity, being the global brand that we are, we believe in research, but we also and especially believe in research 
that brings something positive to society. It's no point doing research for the purpose of publishing a paper, but doing research for the purpose of improving society is something which is, I believe, worth every effort. And this conference today, the one on e-learning, the one on learning, the one on digital era, is something which touches all of our heart because it is something which is essential for the survival of education. And Amity Mauritius has been delighted to be an associate of this conference. We have been delighted to hear all this, all the different uh, discourse, all the different research that has been done. And we congratulate the organizing parties. We congratulate Professor Naya as chair of the, of the conference. And we do look forward to further collaboration with you, Dr. Singh, the University of Durban, and all our colleagues here. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Prof. Panjan. So where, um, what has been our journey since the first edition of the conference? And as you all know, in 2020, we published the conference proceedings. For those of you who have not viewed it, it is accessible on our website. 2021 thus far, put together the book of abstracts that is also available on our website. And then more importantly, um, many of the attendees present here today have also contributed to this edited book, which we have just completed to be published by El Sevilla uh, on academic voices, which looks at giving academics a voice to of teaching in this digital world. I also want to invite you and inform you that we are now in the process of um, calling for proposals for our second book, which focuses on quality assurance and academic integrity in the digital environment. So if you are interested, and I hope that many of you are, uh, please do contact me or any of the editors. We, we, we would be more than happy to uh, engage with you on a submission for this particular book. Um, I also want to remind you that we do have a YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to it, please do subscribe to it. All of the, the presentations from the 2020 edition are available on the YouTube channel. And of course, the 2021 um, edition of the presentations will also be uploaded once they have been edited sometime in January. For those of you who haven't subscribed to our WhatsApp group, you're more than welcome to keep in contact with us throughout the year on WhatsApp. And then of course, you are familiar with the website itself. So to launch or to officially launch the 2022 edition of the conference, um, the trend has been to keep it on the last Thursday and Friday in December, oh, sorry, the first Thursday and Friday in December. So the dates for 2022 are the first and second of December. We're hoping by that time that the pandemic has eased, that we will have the ability to meet you face to face uh, in Durban, South Africa. However, should that not be possible, we will still continue, continue in an online mode. The theme for the next edition is quality and integrity in digital education. And one of our associates for the, for the next edition of the conference is Leaders of Africa. And we have with us today, Prof. Peter Pennard. Um, Prof, would you like to say a few words just to introduce your organization? Yeah, absolutely. And I've got a couple of slides, but only pictures, nothing, nothing yeah. research really. So You're let welcome me share, to share it. Let me share my screen. So thank you. Um, Apasana for giving me a moment to share a little bit about Leaders of Africa. And it is right now about just after 5 a.m. local time, the conference day start at 1 a.m. local time here on the East Coast of the U.S. But it's been a, a lovely all-nighter for me and I've enjoyed the presentations quite a lot. And um, just by way of introduction, I actually met Apasana um, a few months ago when Leaders of Africa was holding a series that was looking at uh, tech in higher education in the context of the pandemic. We are bringing um, on our platform a number of different academics that do experimental research, observational research, um, a variety of different forms of research that had, as we've been talking about today, practical outcomes. And so you can see one of the events that uh, Dr. Apasana Singh participated in. 
And I was really happy just a, a, a few weeks ago, or now I think about a month ago, that she reached out to leaders of Africa and to myself about being a partner for the upcoming Digital 2Ks 2022 conference. And we're really excited about this partnership because as an organization, Leaders of Africa, we've been doing a lot of work in the digital education and e-learning space. And this has really grown out of a program that we first forged ahead with, which was a program aimed at improving research methods um, in, in African higher education. Uh, and our team is a diverse team. So I'm the only American. Most of us are either African diasporans or those based on the African continent. And we got together to form an organization to work on improving in particular research quality and methods, uh, particularly on the quantitative side. And so we spearheaded this program looking at quantitative methods um, in the year of 2018 and 2019. Um, the program's grown over time. And at that time, obviously this was much before the pandemic, there were a lot of uncertainty we had as a team about using digital platforms, uh, e-learning and virtual learning to bring people together across the continent to learn what are really sometimes complex methods in coding and in platforms such as uh, R and Python and the like. And in those early days, we were obviously uncertain, but we learned quite a lot uh, through that experience. And it has brought, in, brought us to engage in the e-learning space and engage in research in that space. Because many of those who are involved in our earliest programs at Leaders of Africa in the Institute were actually in diverse set of fields outside of education. Myself, I'm actually a political scientist. So I do work on democracy, elections in regional bodies such as the African Union. Uh, and uh, in, in, in the African context. So we all come from different backgrounds, but we were brought together um, from looking at uh, improvements and as well as the, the ability to leverage digital tools uh, for teaching purposes. And obviously this, uh, uh, this came to a head when all of our institutions, including those in the United States, as well as those where our collaborators are across the African continent, uh, went into lockdown and we began to help institutions work out strategies of engaging students um, during that period of the pandemic. And obviously we, we, we've, we've sort of talked quite a lot about that. You can see some of the images of, of our scholars that come from 15 different African countries. I guess the only thought I'll leave you, and it's something that us at Leaders of Africa, we think quite a lot about, is that beyond this conversation that, that has uh, taken place at the conference about accessibility in the context of a classroom, we always are trying to think and be cognizant of the broader sort of societal con you know, context in which higher education works in, in the Leaders of Africa Institute itself. And this data you can show that you can see here comes from Afrobarometer, which is um, a, a survey platform that I've worked uh, with. Um, and they do work on sort of education, governance, and things of this nature. And one of the interesting things you see here is, is those that report owning, owning or having immediate access to a laptop. You can see there's significant variation. Now, this is a cross-national survey, so it's not targeted to urbanites. It's not targeted to people with a higher education background or degree or those interested in pursuing higher education. It's just the overarching population. And you can see that there's great variation. And so one of the things that Leaders of Africa attempts to do is, is think about these, these question of pedagogy in the context of our classrooms and, and our virtual classrooms and our real classrooms, uh, in-person classrooms, but also thinking about how we engage in closing that div digital divide through purposeful engagement with policymakers. And I like in Lorraine's uh, poem that uh, she just shared, this important uh, intersection that, that academics can have with leadership. And sometimes us academics we're not always great with interacting with policymakers, and we're sometimes not always um, viewing ourselves in uh, ourselves as policy leaders, and particularly having a, a large and amplified voice outside of our immediate settings. But at Leaders of Africa in the Institute, we put an emphasis on research that that has a direct influence over policy uh, in the education space. And so in the context of the pandemic, we worked with policymakers and governments to think about strategies of liberalizing access to digital data and things of this nature in countries like Nigeria and, and Ghana and the like. And so we do a lot of work in the advocacy space above and beyond the research that we do in education. 
And I guess the, the last thing I'll say is that we also do research and we sponsor research ourselves as an institution. We have actually going to the field next week, a national survey in Cameroon that relates to digital education in the country, as well as educational opportunities. It's led by one of our fellows at the Leaders of Africa Institute, who's the Vice Dean of Student Affairs uh, at in the Department of Education at the University of Boya, which is Cameroon's uh, number one speaking uh, English speaking university. Um, so we do a lot of things in the education space, and we know that uh, many of you, some of you may have heard of Leaders of Africa in the Institute, but some of you have not. But we really invite you to engage with us uh, as we uh, move forward with our partnership uh, with the conference next year. I'm going to put some links to subscribe to our mailing list. And we also have a platform we like to use, which is called Discord. Uh, it's a chat platform. It's kind of like WhatsApp, but the only difference is it works in channels. So you can have channels for different topics of discussion. We find that that works well for our, our scholars and fellows at our institute, as well as engaging um, a lot of folks uh, on, on a number of issues. So I'm going to share those links uh, with you in the chat. But again, thank you, Apasana, for this opportunity to share a little bit about Leaders of Africa. And we're really excited uh, for the conference coming up uh, next year. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be together in the same time zone uh, in Durban. Apasana, you're on mute. Yes. Hopefully, Peter, hopefully we're able to be on the same, same time zone next year this time. Um, I'm sorry that you have to be up so early in the morning. It's really hard to coordinate uh, having the international people at different times. But nevertheless, we're grateful for your participation. Uh, I've noted over the last two days you have participated actively in engaging with the speaker. So thank you for that. We look forward also to getting some research presentations from this association with you, seeing that you're doing so much, particularly in the African region, and possibly to be able to reach out to the greater African area. Um, I see Tony is back. Tony, would you like to say a few words? You had um, agreed. Yes, I agreed, and I thank you. <laughs> thank and, you. <laughs> and thank you so much to the amazing organizers of this conference um, and to the presenters. There have been some marvelous presentations, keynotes, conversations that have taken place here. A lot of ways of tapping into a lot of local experience, insight, and research that you wouldn't have got in many other conferences. Um, and just um, apologies for dipping in and out of this conference. Um, it's been a crazy time of year for, I'm sure, for a lot of us um, in terms of lots of demands on time. Um, and listening to a bit of that last presentation, I'm curious to learn more about leaders of Africa. Um, and thinking towards 2022, um, I think we want to continue the association between um, digital, whatever it's going to be, 2K plus 2, um, or, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is, um, the, the, the subscript, um, and Emerge Africa, and also to um, renew that conversation around conference design. Um, and I'm already thinking of ways in which this vibrant, lovely um, conference with rich conversations um, can perhaps be even more vibrant um, and even more exciting than it is currently. And thank you for the association and the partnership. And I'm going to stop now. I'll just put the URL for Emerge Africa into the chat. Thank you, Tony. It's wonderful to have your team here. Thank you for the exciting workshop yesterday. I understand that you didn't have as many participants as you expected, but that's normal. Uh, when we have parallel sessions, it's impossible to, to get everybody channeled uh, into one venue. So uh, hopefully, if we're face to face next year, we can get a greater participation and more active and engaging participation. Um, I'm holding you to this <laughs> because, okay, so I mean, obviously, you're responsible now for sorting out the pandemic yes, so we can have course. a face to face conference in Derbs next year. And yes. I'm I mean, I, I, I grew up in Derbs and I want to not just go to this conference, but also have another excuse to visit my, my mom and aunt in Durban. 
And just Thank remember you. the dolphins. I remember that from last year. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so I have a year in which to develop a vaccine to eradicate COVID and pray that I do succeed in my mission. You so, can do um, it. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost at lunchtime. Um, I know a lot of the participants want to know when the proceedings will be out. They will be available by the end of December. We're working really hard to get it together. Your presentation and attendee certificates would also be sent to you over the next few days. Um, Prof Naya, last few words from you. Okay, thank you. I think, uh, yes, I, I was going to mention the conference proceedings. There's actually two publications that come out of this particular conference. And that's one is the book of abstracts and the other one is conference proceedings, which actually has, uh, I think, 20 uh, referee journal, uh, referee, uh, double blind referee papers in it coming out as well. Uh, there's just one thing that has missed in this equation and Dr. Singh keeps doing this. Uh, the nucleus of this conference is Dr. Singh. All right. Yes. She is, she is. She is the main person that holds this conference together because it's hosted in Durban, South Africa. All right. So she does lots of the running around, but right now she does the running around in the house. She's not allowed outside the house in the sense. But I must thank her. And I think we all must thank her because she has done this second time in a row because of the, of the COVID as such. And the organization has been splendid. Uh, uh, very, very uh, fluid and smooth. And I think that shows organization skills of a very high level. So thank you very much again, Dr. Singh, for that excellent work that you've done. Thank you. Uh, I think you. what I want to say is, I mean, she said the thank you to everyone. But I think what you need to realize is if you don't come in and actually present this work, this conference doesn't exist. And Dr. Singh and I, came up with this idea because this was a gap that we wanted to fill. We wanted to fill the practical, what they call aspects of research, especially in, in the region, all right, but bring in global, uh, what they call uh, visions into that region itself. And I think we have achieved it and it's growing year by year as such. It, it reminds me of an English proverb that, that necessity is the mother of invention. And if you think about it, your research is adding or fueling that particular need of us to try and actually understand and try to improve ourselves in a digital world. A question came out in a recent uh, keynote address that I had to do in a workshop, and I think Dr. Singh and I were involved in it. And the question came out is, where are we going? Are we going back to our normal situation of a face-to-face? -face? And I was quick to the answer, absolutely not. The digital world is here to stay, and I think it's going to be more digital and less face-to-face, -face. all right? In other words, blended, but I would say it's a 70% digital and 30% blended, and that is changing. And in Australia, we are trying to get our students back into classrooms, and they're refusing to come in because they are now they, they, they first opposed it. Now they actually embrace it. So there's a difference, there's a difference in dynamics, there's a difference in the way they're learning and they're appreciating the ability, the flexibility of online learning. And I think this conference will keep dragging in those aspects in and actually allow us to exchange the information and hopefully take one or two ideas back and implement it as such. In a way. And next year's conference is what I think both of us actually know, Dr. Singh and I have discussed is, it's something very dear to our heart, especially quality and integrity in the digital education world, because this is where it's going to lie. Did the institutions, global institutions, deliver what they're supposed to deliver? And the graduates that are coming out are actually engineers or computer scientists. Can they do their work? And to address that, maybe we'll meet. We'll meet in 2022 to see what we actually come out with. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Singh. Um, thank you, Prof. Naya, for those closing words. I, I don't have anything further to say, but just to remind you that the conference still continues. We have lunch from 12.30 till 1, uh, and then we have our keynote speech thereafter. We um, invite you all to just join us if you want to in this immersive view, just to, to switch your videos <laughs> on, say goodbye 
for those of you who want to uh, switch your videos on, you're welcome to. But it would be lovely to see all of you again. And we uh, close at about 4 p.m. today. We look forward to seeing you next year. Okay, so it's officially lunch break. We return to this main venue at 1 p.m. South African time, which is in 30 minutes time, and we will continue with the keynote speech thereafter. Okay, it's good to see everyone. Thank you for a wonderful conference. Thank you.